How do I feel when my website and applications come under attack? Thanks to Newstar Security, I feel confident. Their full ultra-secure suite of always-on cloud security services means our website will always be available to our customers whenever they need it, day or night. Newstar Security does more than ensure my company's online presence is ultra-secure. It ensures my peace of mind. Newstar Security. Always-on. Ultra-secure. Welcome to the Oh Hell No podcast, where I, Keisha Nicole, delivers a daily dose of passion, purpose, and struggle by interviewing people who are living their best life doing what they love. Here on this podcast, every Oh Hell No moment serves a purpose. Now let's get started with the show. everyone, welcome to another episode of the Oh Hell No podcast. Today I have Nicholas Warrender. He is the CEO of Lifted Made, which is a CBD company. Yep, that's correct. <laughs> okay. CBD, all sorts of cannabinoids, everything but minimal THC we work with over here. So I know you guys might think, oh my God, why is she doing all this stuff on CBD and weed and all that stuff? Because it's interesting, that's why. So welcome to the show, <laughs> Nicholas. <laughs> all right. So as a young man, you loved playing basketball. Tell us who introduced you to the sport and why you thought you had the potential to make that a career? Yeah. Uh, so my, my dad introduced me to the sport. I was fortunate enough to have him as a coach for many years and also just as a mentor. And, uh, you know, the, the correlation between basketball and business as well as just life in general um, is, is incredible. So it's, it's been it, it's been an awesome journey on the basketball side. You know, that was something I thought I'd be doing, you know, my entire life. And, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate my dad for, for making that introduction. Wow. Okay. So do you think that the basketball thing was a passion? And do you think that you had the talent to take that passion all the way? Oh, it was definitely a passion. It was one of those things where, you know, I'm out on the court before the sun rises and after it goes down. And, um, you know, I think everybody would like to think that they, they, they could do something with it, but, uh, I'd like to believe that, that I had the potential, you know, as a point guard, um, as a tall point guard with, with hops and with a good jump shot and a good left hand, uh, it was, it was a recipe for success. And we, you know, we won a lot of championships and we played against some great teams. I, had, I was fortunate enough to play against, you know, guys that made it in the NBA and, and get a taste for a high level of competition with basketball. Wow. Okay. So tell us what happened that derailed that dream for you. Yeah. So when I was 17, I was on a cruise with uh, my family, my brother, my best friend. And, um, you know, long story short, we found ourselves in a, in a third world prison. Uh, we got, we got kidnapped and, uh, we were, we were stuck down in Belize and, um, I was in a prison that was called the Tiss House, and it was a, a really, really nasty situation where we went from this incredible celebration and journey of, you know, basketball and life and being together as a family to, uh, you know, seeing some of the, the worst parts of this world you can imagine. And, you know, by God, uh, we were able to get out of there. And, and when I got out, I became extremely ill with uh, some sort of virus. They're not exactly sure. Um, kind of chalked it up to autoimmune disorder. And for about the next 10 years, I was in and out of the hospital, uh, in and out of the hospital throughout college to the point where my mom had to go sit into some of our lecture halls just so I was physically there. And I'd sit there on a Zoom call from the hospital bed. And it was uh, it was definitely a struggle, a very humbling point of my life. You know, I, I couldn't play basketball anymore. I couldn't be active, which, you know, I was just a gym rat. I lived in the gym from school to the gym all day, every day. So, um, yeah, talk about a derailment from, from your, your hopes and dreams. <laughs> right. That is so crazy. Do you mind if I ask how you guys got kidnapped? Was it like getting in the wrong cab or like just for people who you know are traveling in the future when we're able to travel again you know how they can avoid a situation yeah. <laughs> like that. <laughs> that 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. So, you know, you get off a cruise ship, you end up in these ports, and, you know, they want to sell you all sorts of gadgets and T-shirts and things. And, you know, we were three young white guys, you know, and, and unfortunately we got targeted that day and um, ended up at gunpoint in the back of a truck and, and off we went. So uh, it was really an unfortunate event. You know, I guess any advice I'd give somebody is just be very, very cautious when you're in some of these countries. There's fantastic people, but, you know, there's also a lot of bad people everywhere. You know, you need to be cautious in the south side of Chicago too. So it's all God's plan. You know, I, I do I do believe that we go through things to uh, get tools in our lives that are going to prepare us for the next step of life and, and the next chapter. And it's not always what you anticipate it to be. You know, um, your passions change as, as life changes and as your body changes and all these different things. So, you know, the kid is like one track mind to basketball. But looking back on it, um, I take it all as a lesson and a blessing. Yeah, I was going to ask you what you took from that experience. And I guess you kind of just summed it up right there is, you know, things change and you just got to roll with it and you got strength from that situation. That's really a great way to look at it. Um, is there anything you want to add to that? No, I mean, it's it, it, it really is perspective, yeah. right? So, um, you know, bad things happen to good people and, and you can dwell on them and you can always wonder what if and throw the old varsity jacket on and sit at the bar and crack open beers or uh, you take those lessons and, and you look at it as, as practice like you would for a game, you know, life is a game in a sense. So, you know, you build tools along the way, you go through certain scenarios along the way, it builds confidence, it builds character, it builds humility. Um, so, you know, be open to whatever life brings at that point and, and just know that, you know, in my opinion, you know, God is setting you up to, to learn things that, that you need for that next chapter of your life, whatever it looks like. Absolutely. Well, I'm glad you guys made it out safe because that is scary as hell. Yeah, <laughs> I could still be down there for all I know, and I'd probably have an even worse beard than I do with this COVID-19 going on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right. So tell us how you got into the cannabis business. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, back in 2014, I was introduced to vapor products, uh, electronic cigarettes, and at that time, you know, you didn't see them everywhere. There was no jewel. There was no huge uh, industry like we've seen unfold over the last couple of years. And at that time, uh, there was a lot of products that were that were being imported from China, including e-liquids that go into the device. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, a friend of mine introduced me to one of his colleagues who was a, was a chemist. He was doing formulations and things of that nature. And and I found it very interesting. He needed help with a website and branding. So I said, look, you know, I'll take the little bit of money I've saved up through college and, you know, come into this thing with you. So uh, we started this company called OTC Off the Chain. And um, it was a great learning experience. I mean, there's a lot of, of great things that had happened. We learned, you know, building out a facility, building out a clean room, bringing a product to market and, and everything that goes along with that. You know, unfortunately, a year into that endeavor, my partner had, uh, decided to, uh, to call it quits on life. He uh, unfortunately committed suicide. Uh, he was found by his best friend's wife at our facility. And it was just a really kind of nasty, dark period um, for all of us. You know, um, I had lost my investment, which at that point I didn't even care about. I was just really upset at, at what had happened with him. And, you know, three weeks later to the day, uh, my best friend OD'd on heroin. So, and I had never really experienced death close to me. So I had these two back-to-back -back -back deaths, and it was really, really tough. So I took the little bit uh, of stock that we had at the warehouse, and I called my mom and was like, you know, you know you got this little 10-by-10 10 10 room off of your warehouse. Do you mind if I utilize that to try to, to continue running with this dream that my partner had? So, you know, thank God for her. She, she and my dad allowed me to come over there and, and set up shop and uh, you know we created the first hundred bottles of lifted liquids which was this brand that you know i had, I had thought about uh doing before otc and um you know that was the birth of lifted liquids very very small small run got into a local vape shop that had just opened called the vape scene and very thankful for those guys they they believed in the product they believed in the vision so put it in there on consignment and a week later they called me and said look we sold out we need some more at that point, I was extremely broke, 
uh, back and forth in my car between my girlfriend's place and my mom's house and said, look, you know, give me a little bit of time and I'll get you some more stock. So um, this, this lifted brand had began at this really small, really dark place and um, it was just this little silver lining. So we started building this brand. We started building this, this lifestyle brand of, of helping people translate away from cigarettes. And, you know, cigarette-related death was the number one cause of death in the United States. Over half a million people a year died from it. So uh, my dad used to smoke. I absolutely hated it and despised it. So, you know, we, we really liked the mission of, of helping people, of being able to get these testimonials of, of life, life transformations and, and, you know, people get off cigarettes and it, it just, it was a chain reaction of all these other positive things that began happening in these people's lives just because they can get away from cigarettes. It was incredible to hear how, how this was helping people. So in, in late 2015, I personally got introduced to CBD from some of the health issues that I was dealing with. And at that time, you know, it was still federally illegal. Some of the states, it was a gray area. So, you know, we were extremely small. I, I took a small risk at that time when we brought some in. Uh, it was extremely expensive back then. So we started small and it was a, a similar rollout. You know, we, we, we started small. We got in the local places. We got feedback. We got testimonials. And again, they were just mind blowing, the kind of things that were happening. Um, you know, I'll never forget, we had one client down in North Carolina, and he called me and said, look, we've got a, a veteran. He comes every week. He drives an hour each way, and he picks up the tincture, and he's gotten off of all of his PTSD meds. And it was those type of testimonials where I was like, wow, you know, again, this falls in, within our mission, and and I, I really think that we can make an impact with this. Uh, so we started delving deeper into uh, hemp, uh, it was pretty much all isolate based products at that time. And it was extremely expensive. So we were like, how do we, how do we get this in people's hands where they can spend like five bucks? So we developed like a single serve, um, product and we went out on the road. We did uh, a few pop-up events and things of that nature. And we have people come by, they'd have a beer, they'd pour this little additive in there. And a few hours later, you know, we have people coming back talking about how they can open up their hands or, you know, their back isn't hurting like it used to. And it was like, it's just kind of crazy. It was quote unquote cure all for so many different people that, you know, we just knew that there was going to be something big here. So, um, in 2018, the FDA put a regular, uh, uh, a freeze on the marketplace for vape products where you could no longer create or launch any new products. Um, so, you know, CBD was just, it was just a natural pro progression for us to be able to continue to be innovative uh, formulate new things, rebrand new things, and and continue to to grow as a brand and a company. So it was a it was a great kind of transition for us as a business, and uh, it still had that that great impact that we were looking for. So um, it was it was very cool. Kind of stumbled into it personally, and and it translated well into our business. So um, all right. So the CBD. Do first, do you guys grow your own product or do you get it from someplace else? No, so we do not cultivate uh, and we do not process. Mm -hmm. We like to work with local farms. Mm -hmm. um, some of these farms are organic generational farms. I'm not a farmer. You're not going to catch me in the field unless it's just coming to check out the crop. But um, we we found it to be, you know, we stick in our lane. Our lane is consumer facing products, coming up with great brands finding different niches and, and bringing products to market. And then we work with different laboratories, extraction labs and, and growers uh, here in the state of Wisconsin, as well as Illinois and throughout the United States. I love that you said stay in your lane because that is my mantra. Like no matter what you're doing, you have to know where you fit in and what you're good at and stay in that lane, no matter what anybody else is doing like you know what i mean so i love that you said amen that. to that absolutely <laughs> and yeah everybody's great at what they do you can't be the best at everything exactly if you're a point guard you don't play that five position you're at the top of the key so you know know where your lane is and, and stick into it that's, right. that's definitely my motto too i love that so what do you what do you really struggle with today in your business like before when you were first starting it was hard because it was a financial thing and you know then you had the loss and you had to kind of take that on by yourself and and move this 
thing forward. But now that you're well into your business, what do you struggle with? Yeah, so, you know, the interesting thing between uh, the cannabis industry and the vape industry is, at least from my perspective, there's a lot of different parallels. Um, in the vape industry, you know, it seemed like every quarter something was changing, whether it was the bottle size or the nicotine strength or the type of packaging or the type of flavor. And, and you do you see that a lot in especially the hemp industry, being that it's 50 state uh, or majority of 50 state. Uh, you, you're not confined to one state and you're, you're not confined by regulation at this point. So, you know, one, one big hurdle is volatility in the marketplace. So we've seen, you know, raw goods crash all over the place. We've seen pricing all over, um, you know, a, as well as what consumers are looking for and how it's getting integrated into new industries. So you see the food, the beverage industry, the pet industry, cosmetics, you see all these big industries that are moving into utilizing CBD and hemp as an ingredient. Um, before these industries moved in, CBD kind of stood as an industry in itself. Uh, but it seems like those days are kind of behind us. And now it's important to really be laser focused on who your audience is and who it is that you're going after. And being able to meet them in products that they're already utilizing on a daily basis rather than trying to introduce something new. So it's just kind of been this, this constant change where you feel like almost every day, like what worked yesterday doesn't work today and isn't going to work tomorrow. So um, the, the vape industry really did prepare us for these pivots. And as a company, you know, one of our mantras has been stay lean and stay agile and be able to, to move freely while, this industry unfolds you know we're at the beginning of a massive unfolding of an industry and it is going to be important to kind of to stay agile and be able to to make these changes as the industry unfolds you know yeah do you guys have the same issues with banking your money and um, accepting credit cards and things like that in your state also uh, there has been a lot of issues with that we've been fortunate Shout out to BMO Harris. They've come in clutch for us. But we did, you know, we got dropped by Chase. We got dropped by credit card processing. But, you know, other companies have come in. They've seen opportunity. They've taken risk. And they've been able to provide us with those services, which we've been able to refer to other customers that are having the same issues. So there's a lot more options today than there was yesterday and especially last year. Um, so that's it's encouraging to see that banks are coming on the line credit card prices are coming the line, you know, funds are coming in on the line. So uh, it's good to see, you know, the a, a standardization from the monetary side, for sure. So for what you do, in terms of how you run your business, and the way you got into the business, you're not a grower, but you know, you sell products and things like that. If someone if someone wanted to get into the business in the way that you are in the business, would it be millions of dollars of an investment or would it be a lot less than that? Well, I guess it depends on who you ask, <laughs> but <laughs> asking me, um, you know, this is something where it, if you are willing to roll up your sleeves and do a lot of work and a lot of dirty work, you can get into an industry like this without millions or even hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but again, you know, you can you can build out a website yourself. You can pay somebody thirty thousand dollars to build out a website. So it's it's it really is um, being nimble in the way that you know if, if you're willing to start small, if you're willing to smart start conservative, and you're willing to put a lot of work in, you can create a foundation to build off of without having big money behind you like like we never had. So um, the most important thing to do is just to start you know, uh, start imperfectly and, and just get the ball rolling. And, and you really do figure out along the way, you know, you mess up, you have mistakes, but, um, those are the things that make your skin a little thicker and you figure out what to, what to not do next time. It's just important to know what to do. Uh, it's even more important to know what not to do and what, what mistakes not to continue to make. So, um, my encouragement with anybody, regardless of the industry they're looking to get into, is find your strength and just begin. Uh, begin imperfectly. Okay, that's good. So how do you create your products? Tell us about, like, or do you have, like, different strains of stuff? I learned about something the other day. It was called, like, a one-to-one, -one, and I might be saying this wrong because I'm still learning. 
<laughs> but can you, you tell go. can you tell us a little bit about some of your products and how they come about? Absolutely. So we've worked with all sorts of things from wild exotic cannabinoids like CBG and CBN and CBC and some to, to your point, one-to-one products that have equal amounts of some of these cannabinoids, whether it's THC to CBD or CBN to CBD. Um, so there's there's a, a deep end of scientific and formulations and all of these things that you can do to create products that help people. And we find that the simplest form of this plant is has just as much demand and, and just as much potential. So, you know, we've developed amazing formulas for ourselves, for other companies and built out brands. And, and we've recently launched a brand called Herb, U-R-B, uh, Herb Finest Flower. And it's a very simple brand. It's packaged flour, right? So it's right from the farm. It's properly cured. And it goes into a, a very nice packaged bag. And then we're doing pre-rolled joints um, as so, so it's just kind of interesting to see. I mean, you can go extremely technical and extremely scientific, and you can also go, uh, it's the, the most simple form possible, and, and there's kind of a market for all of it. So, um, you know, it's, it's just kind of funny how it works out that way. I feel like with all the concentrates and all the tinctures and edibles and all of these things, people still come back to flour. Uh, they still come back to smokables. It's different. You know, you keep the terpenes intact. You have the strain-specific uh, options that have different effects as well. So it's just, it's, it's, it's always been kind of interesting to, to me to see from the THC and the hemp side, how many people end up trying all these products and they still come back to the flower. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> so you merged your company, right, with Acquired Sales Corp. Why was that a good move for you, and how long did that whole acquisition take? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So, you know, from the beginning, there's been a lot of people that have always wanted to either invest in the company or get involved, and uh, for whatever reason, I just I didn't feel like it was a good fit. Maybe I had a little PTSD from, from the loss of my partner, but, you know, we never took on any money. We always worked with what we had. And uh, when, when we got introduced to Acquired, another great company um you know these guys were different um the the ceo of of that company a guy uh, jerry jacobs his philosophy was just polar opposite of anything that i had ever heard especially from the public uh, from the public company setting so you know typically you have this kind of command and control um structure where you have a public company that sits on top and they've got all this overhead and they have all these executives that just drive the living you-know-what out of the operating companies and end up pushing some of the great entrepreneurs out of the business, Um, you know, his strategy was the exact opposite. Um, The public company comes as a servant. It's there as a vehicle. They keep as small overhead as possible. And it was just a, a phenomenal concept that, you know, I really believed in. And with that, the history, it's worked for him. So, you know, he did a roll up in, in the waste industry that was extremely successful. Um, he uh, led a roll up in the uh, scrap metal industry with a company called Metal Management, which became the largest scrap metal company in the United States. Ended up selling to a Sims company, a company called Sims out of Australia. And Sims Metal Management became. I believe the largest scrap metal company in the world. So uh, he also did it in the internet boom, um, all extremely successful, all with the same philosophy. And I said, look, you know, coming from the vape space where there was really no consolidation and then big compliance hit, you know, if we consolidate this thing in a public vehicle with other great entrepreneurs, this is a way that we can make one plus one equal 10 instead of two. Um, so understanding the value that can uh, a, a private company can get going public and then, you know, always being weary about who you're partnering up with. I feel like um, these were the best guys in the world to partner up with. His, his son, Jake Jacobs, was a, a national champion for snowboarding, uh, a CPA, worked at Ernst & Young. I mean, an absolute beast, uh, an incredible work ethic, an incredible human being. So you know, finding people with similar values, similar work ethic, and that same laser focus on a 24-7, seven days a week, it's hard to find. So, 
when you come across those kind of people and it just kind of clicks like that, uh, you, you, you know, that that's divine intervention, right? So, um, it was a great fit for us. You know, we were, one of, we were the first company that has come in hundred percent into this publicly traded company. And to answer, you know, the last part of your question, it took us about 10 months to close. It took us about 10 minutes to decide that this was going to be something we wanted to do, but you know, audits and due diligence as well as continuing to operate the company with a lean and small team uh, created challenges, but you know, nothing good comes from, from easy work. So uh, we're, we're kind of used to, to working hard for what we got, uh, but it's, it's been a great journey and I'm really excited to, uh, to be partnered up with, with Acquired Sales Corp and the team of people that are behind them. Well, that's fabulous. Congratulations to you on that. Thank you. So tell me something that you would never compromise on and why in your business. Uh, quality. Um, quality is something that, that we never compromise on. Uh, if, if the quality is not there, it doesn't go out the door. And that's, that's again, that's always been something that we've done from the get-go. Um, when we first started this business, we always paid a little bit more for everything that we did. Uh, our philosophy was if we can pay an extra nickel or pay an extra quarter to increase the quality, let's do it rather than, you know, can we save an extra quarter or save an extra nickel by decreasing quality? So we've always invested in high end raw goods. We've always invested in high end packaging. Uh, we've never been penny pinchers. It just wasn't our philosophy partially because, you know, I was the kid that would go into the Nike store and my mom would say, you know, go find a pair of shoes and, I'd come back with the most expensive shoes. I didn't know it. Those were just the ones that I liked. So, right. <laughs> uh, you know, quality uh, from the ground up has just always been our philosophy. Spend a little bit more money to increase that quality. And it, and it does pay off. People, people know the difference. They, they know the difference between quality. So uh, you can feel it, you can taste it, you can touch it, and, and you, you experience it. So, um, you know, spending that extra little money goes a long way. Do you think there is a secret to success, and how would you describe success? Uh, the secret to success is is hard work, and there's no shortcut to success. It's you know the the whole it takes ten years to be an overnight success story. Is, it's just such a true statement. Um, time goes by regardless of the facts. So if you put that work in every single day, you have days that are good, you have days that are bad, but you, you keep jumping back on the horse. Um, that's what breeds success, and it, and it breeds a thick skin and a stick to that is just necessary. So, you know, defining success is, one, I think it's, it's important to enjoy what you do. I think monetarily, you know, a wise man once told me that money is a good way of keeping score, and that's about it. So, you know, I don't, I don't correlate money with success naturally. I think it's more based on impact. You know, what kind of impact do you leave on the planet? What do people say about you when you're gone? I think the worst thing that can happen to somebody is they leave this planet and there's no trace that they were ever here. So we're here to make an impact and that's, that's success for us. Mm, I like that. So what is the biggest misconception about the cannabis business? That it's just a bunch of stoners running around being idiots. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's, there's still that correlation a little bit. Um, but hemp has really helped, in my opinion, again, because you're seeing big industries, you're seeing banking, you're seeing funds moving into this space, and that helps solidify that it's real. Um, you're also seeing people that don't like THC, don't like the idea of cannabis, that are getting behind hemp. So I think it's uh, looking at the cannabis plant in its entirety, not just what we've experienced from you know, the THC side is really important. You know, it's, it's, it, it's really not all about getting high, you know? And, uh, I think the majority of products that you're going to see moving forward, people are taking them not to get high. They're taking them because they're, they're effective. Um, you don't have to fail a drug test if, if, if you're utilizing CBD and not THC. So, um, I think the misconceptions are, are clearing up these days and I think it's happening pretty rapidly yeah i use the cbd oil for um just like pain i rub it on and everything feels good i mean like you know <laughs> in a good way <laughs> but it works and i buy it through the mail do you can you get your products through the mail you can yeah uh, our 
our retail site is liftedmade.com. Um, we also have herbflower.com specifically for that brand. But yeah, we, we ship all over the place. Uh, we take a lot of orders online and yep, everything that we have is available online. And tell us about the name of your company, Lifted Made. Where did that come from? Yeah, so like I said before, Lifted Liquids was our staple brand in, in the vape industry. And we did some sub brands and things of that nature, but you know, we created a name for ourselves with the, the lifted liquids name. And when we moved into CBD, we were, we were doing a lot of brainstorming internally on, you know, what's the next phase of lifted look like. And, you know, we manufacture a lot of different products and different brands that are targeting different niches of the market and also for different companies. So, you know, we've got Herb Flower, we've got uh, a couple of new brands that will be launching um, this year, uh, one over the next month, and we also co-pack for other companies. So, you know, Lifted Made was just kind of a natural fit. Um, one of our great team members, Joe Tabora, he, he came up with the made part, and I, I liked it. I think it, it stuck, it described all the products that come out of our facility, that they're from us, and, and they're made by us. So... Um, yeah, shout out to Joe for that one. Mm, nice. So tell me, 420 is coming up. Um, do you guys do anything big for that day? Do you launch new products? Do you give anything away online? Like what goes on for you guys on, on 420? Yeah, we're excited about 420. So um, you got a little ahead of me here. We're about to roll out a, a, a cool giveaway and a, a new product launch under the old brand. Um, we're rolling out a product line called Moon Rocks, um, and Moon, uh, we're doing a CBD Moon Rock and a CBG Moon Rock. So uh, for those not familiar with the Moon Rock, basically you take the hemp flower, grade A hemp flower. Um, we're utilizing a broad spectrum distillate oil. Uh, so you cover the flower with distillate, and then you roll it around in keef, which is like the trichomes, and, and it's, it's a really potent part of, the, the flower basically it's like the crystals of what you would see on a flower so we're doing those in, in like i said two different offerings um cbd as well as cbg and then we're pairing those with something called a caviar cone which is very similar it's a joint uh, that's then dipped in the distillate oil and rolled in keep so um those are our 420 product launch and we will be doing a giveaway on our social medias for those so we're we're really stoked uh to to get these out um they're they're fantastic. They're extremely strong. Um, they taste great. They work great. I've been pulling from a little bit of the stock. I'm not going to lie. And it's been, they've been, they've been fantastic. So great packaging. We're excited to, to roll that out and get it out in the market and get it in people's hands. That's amazing. All right, Nicholas. Well, thank you so much for coming on the Oh Hell No podcast. I really enjoyed listening to all you got going on with your business. But before I let you go, I have to ask you to share an oh hell no moment with us. And this is a moment that you've had along your journey. And we have a lot of oh hell no moments, right? But I mm -hmm. want you to just share a moment that sticks out in your mind where something happened. It could have been positive, negative, where you were like, oh, hell no. Like, what am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good question. That's a good question. <laughs> I mean, there are some negatives I don't even want to speak on and be honest, but I'd rather stay positive. Well, I'll give you a whole hell no. We were at a we were at a trade show a couple months back prior to uh, everything getting locked down, and um, I turned around and Dennis Rodman was standing right behind me, and I was like, "Oh hell no!" <laughs> uh, and that's I mean, I'm a Chicago Bulls fan from from you know the ground up, diehard. So it was cool to see him there. You know, Mike Tyson was there, and. Anytime you run into some guys like that, it's definitely an oh hell moment. Yeah, that is an oh hell no moment. Um, Mike Tyson is in this business as well. I was listening to him on a podcast talk about his business. So this is like a yeah Tyson Farms. Yeah, Good guys out there. it's like a booming business. Everyone is like you know getting involved in it, but I guess they are really passionate about it because most people who get into it you know they have used the product and it has helped them in some way shape or form so 
you know. Yeah, yeah, it's really personal, definitely. Yeah, so I think that's all, that's great, you know, and there are definitely from just listening to the different stories, um, a lot of health benefits. So, I mean, I think you guys are doing a great thing with putting products out there that are helping people, you know, and not destroying their bodies at the same time. You know what I mean? Amen to that. I could not agree more with you. Yeah. So tell everyone where they can go to, you know, purchase your products and um, find out about entering that giveaway that you have coming up. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Liftedmade.com is our retail website. Um, Facebook is Lifted Made. And Instagram is lifted underscore made. Okay. Sweatpants or slacks? Desk chair or lawn chair? Audio or video? Remarkably remote from GoToMeeting is the microcast to help you navigate working from home without losing your mind. Give us three minutes and we'll give you simple and effective tips to deal with the new normal. From motivation and boundaries to hosting virtual meetings, we've got you covered. Check out Remarkably Remote on your favorite podcasting platform or head to gotomeeting.com slash tips.